Grozny, Checheno English ASSR Soviet Union 1952. A baby girl is born little did anyone know she would become one of Russia's most notorious killers. This seemingly innocent child was Anna Vasilyevna Kuzmina, who would later grow up to cast a dark shadow over the pages of Russian crime history. Her early life, much like any other, was marked with the humdrum of everyday monotony. A native of Grozny, Anna was raised amidst the bustling city life of the Soviet Union era. Growing up, Anna was just like any other girl in her neighborhood. She played with dolls, went to school, had friends, and harbored dreams. Dreams that were far removed from the grim reality that would later unfold. Her life began to take a different shape when she met Vladimir Ivanov, a man who would become her husband. Their marriage on the surface seemed like any other. Two people bound by love and shared dreams, hoping for a life of peace and harmony. But beneath this veneer of normalcy, something sinister was brewing. A storm was gathering, a storm that would soon engulf not just Anna and Vladimir's life, but also the lives of others who would cross their path. As the years rolled by, Anna's life took on a macabre tone. The girl who once played with dolls and dreamt of a simple happy life was now teetering on the edge of an abyss. It was a descent into a chilling darkness that would leave a trail of blood and tears in its wake. The transformation was slow, almost imperceptible. And then, one day, it happened. The girl next door, the loving wife, the dreamer, had transformed. In her place stood a figure that would send chills down the spine of the bravest of hearts. In a twisted turn of fate, this girl next door would soon transform into a chilling murderer. The year 1992 marked the beginning of a horrifying spree of murders in kabardino balkaria In the heart of the Russian Federation, nestled between the towering Caucasus Mountains and the swift-flowing Terek River, lies the Republic of kabardino balkaria Here, a community known for its tranquility and harmony was about to be shattered by a chilling series of events. In the stillness of the night, an unsuspected resident fell victim to a heinous act. An ordinary local, leading a quiet, unassuming life, was found in the confines of their home, brutally bludgeoned. The crime scene was a chilling tableau of violence and bloodshed, an image so stark it would haunt the memories of the locals for years to come. The victim was a middle-aged individual, known for their kindness and generosity. They lived a modest life, always ready to lend a helping hand to the community. The shock of their violent demise sent ripples through the close-knit community, shattering the peace they had long cherished. The innocence of kabardino balkaria was tainted by a grim reality, a reality that was far too gruesome for the peaceful region. The authorities were baffled. There were no signs of forced entry, no evidence of a struggle, and no apparent motive. The killer had struck with a cold precision that suggested careful planning and familiarity with the victim. The weapon, a blunt object, wielded with such force that it left no chance for survival. Yet, the identity of the perpetrator remained a mystery. Who could commit such a horrific act and why? Was it a random act of violence? or the beginning of something far more sinister. The people of kabardino balkaria could only wait and wonder as fear began to cast a long, dark shadow over their homes. The peaceful region was disturbed by a brutal killing, but the worst was yet to come. As the years passed, more victims fell prey to the same brutal method of murder. In the heart of kabardino balkaria a chilling pattern began to emerge. Anna Kuzmina, a seemingly ordinary woman, was leaving a trail of bodies in her wake, each one a testament to her cold-blooded savagery. From 1992 to 2006, five lives were extinguished, one after another, all falling victim to the same brutal bludgeoning that had become Kuzmina's signature. The first two victims were claimed in quick succession. The community was paralyzed by fear, the streets shrouded in an oppressive silence as they tried to comprehend the horror unfolding in their midst. The brutality of the crimes was shocking, but even more so was the realization that the killer was one of their own. In the years that followed, three more victims were claimed, their lives cruelly cut short. Each death, 
was a chilling echo of the last, a grim reminder of the predator lurking amongst them. The community lived in a state of constant fear, never knowing when or where Kuzmina would strike next. The murders were methodical, calculated. Kuzmina was careful, leaving no trace of her presence at the crime scenes. The police were left grappling in the dark, the trail of bodies growing longer with each passing year. As the death toll rose, so did the fear. The once peaceful community was now a hotbed of suspicion and dread. Friends turned on friends, neighbors eyed each other warily, and trust was a luxury no one could afford. The community was held hostage by an unseen killer, their lives forever marred by the specter of death. Despite the terror that gripped the community, life had to go on. People went about their daily routines, their faces etched with the constant worry of who might be next. But underneath the veneer of normality, everyone was asking the same question. Who could be capable of such monstrous acts? Little did they know, the killer was closer than they thought. In 2006, the chilling truth surfaced. The murderer was none other than Anna Kuzmina. A wave of disbelief washed over the communities of Cabardino Balcaria and Pskov Oblast. The woman they knew as a neighbor, a friend, a wife, was unmasked as a ruthless murderer. The veil of normality that Anna wore had fooled everyone. She was not just an ordinary woman. She was a lethal predator hiding in plain sight. When the law enforcement closed in on Anna, the evidence was overwhelming. The tools of her heinous deeds were found implicating her beyond doubt. The murder weapon, a bludgeoning tool, was discovered, still bearing the haunting remnants of her gruesome acts. The once inconspicuous items of her household were now chilling artifacts of a murderer's arsenal. Her confession sent shockwaves through the nation. Anna Kuzmina, a woman who seemed like any other, confessed to the brutal murders of five innocent souls. She recounted her crimes with a chilling detachment, each word a testament to her monstrous deeds. Her confession was a chilling narrative of manipulation, violence, and death. She spoke not with remorse, but with a cold, calculating tone, laying bare the depths of her depravity. The revelation was a stark reminder that evil often lurks where we least expect it. The people who had known Anna were left grappling with the horrifying reality. The woman they had trusted, invited into their homes, was indeed capable of such vile acts. Their friend, their neighbor, their loved one, had been leading a double life her true nature concealed behind a facade of normality. The shock of Anna's unmasking rippled through the nation, a sobering reminder of the hidden darkness that can reside within the most unassuming individuals. The friendly neighbor, the loving wife, was in fact a cold-blooded killer. In the face of overwhelming evidence, Kuzmina was sentenced to 21 years in prison. The courtroom was thick with tension as the verdict was read out, the collective breath of those present held in anticipation. The trial had been a grueling process, a thorough examination of the chilling crimes committed by Anna Kuzmina. The gavel struck, echoing in the hushed silence, signifying the end of a chapter in this dreadful saga. As news of the sentence spread, there was a palpable sense of relief that swept through the communities of Cabardino, Balcaria, and Pskov Oblast. Justice, it seemed, had been served. But this was not a victory to be celebrated. It was a grim reminder of the horrors that had unfolded over a span of 14 years. The public reaction was a mix of relief, sorrow, and lingering unease that such a monster had lived among them. The trial revealed the brutal details of Kuzmina's crimes. The method of her murders, the cold, calculated bludgeoning of her victims sent shivers down the spines of those who heard about it. The weapon, an ordinary household object turned instrument of death, became a symbol of the mundane horror that she represented. Kuzmina's conviction brought closure to the families of the victims, yet it was a bittersweet end. The loss they had suffered was irreplaceable, their loved ones forever etched in their hearts. The sentence, while just, could not erase the pain they had endured. Yet the trial also served as a stark reminder of the strength of human resilience. The families, the community, they stood strong together, united in their grief and their determination for justice. They had faced unimaginable horror, 
Yet they emerged stronger, a testament to the power of the human spirit. In the end, Kuzmina's reign of terror had come to an end. The woman who had once been a wife, a neighbor, a seemingly ordinary citizen, was now a convicted serial killer. Her name would forever be associated with the horrors she perpetrated, a chilling reminder of the darkness that can hide in plain sight. Her reign of terror had ended, but the scars she left would never fully heal. The story of Anna Kuzmina, the seemingly ordinary woman who became a monster, serves as a chilling reminder of the depths of human depravity. But it also teaches us about the strength of communities, the resilience of the human spirit, and the power of justice.